Uh, so my project was multi-method. Um, uh, the methods I used were participant observation, uh, focus groups, uh, semi-structured interviews, discourse analysis, um, and uh, photo narratives. Um, uh, my rationale for using multi-method really came from my conceptual framework. Um, you know, uh, Bordeaux's um, emphasis on looking at um, young people's lives um, in their everyday context and how um, it's structured by, you know, structuring forces. Um, I felt that using different methods, I could get at both the structures and um, their agency. So. Um, Discourse analysis was particularly useful in um, examining structures, or at least how uh, dominant, um, you know, uh, structuring forces like the media um, uh, represent young people, young racialized people in priority neighborhoods. And then the different, um, the, part, um, the interviews allowed me to question young people about um, representations of them. Um, and how this informs um, their sense of belonging and uh, their sense of citizenship. Uh, but what participa participant observation added to this was that oftentimes what young people would tell me in an interview would directly contradict what they were actually doing, right? So for example, they would, you know, say, yeah, multiculturalism is great, you know, Canada is great, we get to, you know, experience all these cultures. But in their everyday realities, they're still very much uh, tend to not, um, you know, mingle with other cultures. Um, so I think participation observation allows you to kind of get at some of these contradictions and ambiguities and how they actually live it out as opposed to sometimes in interviews I think especially young people when they see an adult they think I have to answer them in a way they want me to answer them. So I think using different methods you kind of get to get a more holistic understanding. So uh, for my participant uh, observation, I spent um, 16 months in the field at two different locations. Um, my initial uh, idea was to go to the center and just kind of you know, mingle with the young people in the lobby and you know, just see how they go about their everyday life. I soon came to realize that uh, most of the time they would you know, politely talk to me, but then kind of like, move themselves away to, uh, because, you know, they didn't want this, um, you know, teacher figure, right? That's what they were trying to escape coming from school to the community center after school. Uh, so I realized I needed to get to interact with them at, in a, you know, more um, unthreatening environment. So um, they were running certain programs at the center. So I decided to participate in the programs. Um, and there's many different programs. There were uh, videography, photography, slam poetry, there was a literacy program, um, there was a civic engagement leadership program, there was a girls empowerment program. Uh, so I would sit in, in these groups um, and you know, this was an excellent way, right? Most of the times they would forget I was there or when they didn't, they would uh, they wouldn't mind, right? And you would hear very interesting conversations going on, uh, both uh, to do with the activity that they were doing, but also just you know young people talking about their everyday lives. Um, so I wouldn't write uh, my notes. So I would always have my notebook with me, um, and which wasn't odd at the center because most young people would have notebooks with them too. They would get this as part of their program, um, or you know they're coming after school. So, uh, with their backpacks and books, so they didn't seem too um, suspicious of my notebook. But I wouldn't write in front of them most of the time. I didn't want, uh, I felt comfortable, uncomfortable that, you know, I was kind of judging them and writing down things. And I didn't want them to feel that, you know, they were lab rats or that, and you know, especially when you're working with a very marginalized population who's, you know, used to, you know, be, you know, dealing with different forms of authority, you didn't want them to think you're just another, you know, a school psychiatrist or a social worker or things of that nature. Um, so when I came home, I would write down um, all my notes um, th the night after. So I would write down everything, even if I didn't think it was important because, you know, it, you know, and most of it, looking back, I didn't end up using, but it's good to have. I would write down, you know, um, you know, what they were eating, what they were saying, what they were watching. There was a TV in the lobby, and, you know, they would always be watching um, um, YouTube. Um, and 
um, they would, interesting enough, they would always be watching um, these rap videos from when I was a young person, so early 2000s. So, which I thought was really interesting because when we were growing up, we wouldn't, you know, listen too much of early 90s uh, rap music. So, I thought it was really interesting that this youth, you know, they were really interested in, in a particular era of rap. Um, I would, you know, write down things that, um, like what they were wearing. So I remember just, you know, things that stood out to me, right? Um, so I remember there was this one young boy, he was wearing um, all blue, and then he had a red bandana on, right? And it, you know, it didn't, nobody even looked twice. But I remember when I grew up in the West End, um, in my neighborhood, you know, which was seen as a crip neighborhood at that time, um, um, you know, we wearing blue uh, was, you know, seen as th the gang colors in that neighborhood. And you wouldn't wear red ever with that, especially with those blue colors, right? And I remember even as a child, my brother would never wear red. You know, he's obvious, you know, he's not part of a gang or anything. And my mom wouldn't understand that when she would buy, she bought him this like big Kool-Aid shirt because that's what they wore then and he wouldn't wear it and like she didn't understand why her like you know fifth grader son is not wearing a red shirt in his neighborhood so I found you know that very very interesting that something had happened in these you know you know decade and some time that you know where it's okay to wear those colors now and you know young people don't think twice about it so just you know random things like that stand out to you